بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد In the previous session we finished verse 31 of Surah Al-Nabak where we mentioned some of the description of the pleasures and bliss a person will enjoy in paradise. Allah continues in verse 32. Allah says, وَحَدَائِقَ أَعْنَابًا Gardens and grapevine. Hadaiq, gardens, is usually a garden with a high fence to give the sense of privacy, my own kingdom, my own property, where I enjoy things in seclusion and no one can trespass or interfere or look or see. It's my own. And in these gardens, all types of fruits will be available. And more than a person has seen in life. And one doesn't have to exert any effort to get the fruits of these trees in these gardens. The fruit will come to you. You're standing up, you're sitting down, you're lying down, it will come to you. You don't have to reach out. No effort is to be exerted. All the effort was done in dunya. Now you're rewarded. So you sit, relax, enjoy. The fruit will come to you. It will be made available to you. Whenever you want it, Whenever you think about it, it comes. It will lie in your palm. We ask Allah to make us amongst the pillars of paradise. Some description of the fruits and trees of, of paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim, and narrated by Sahl ibn Sa'ad, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, alayhi salatu was salam, in paradise there is a tree. It takes a person 100 years who's riding on a horse. It takes him 100 years to pass it. 100 years to pass the trunk of a tree. How huge is this? Subhanallah. In an narration, in the books of Imam Al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Hibban and Shaykh Al-Albani ruled it to be authentic. Abu Hurairah narrates, the Prophet wasallam said, there is not a tree in paradise, but the trunk of which is made of gold. All the trunks of the trees in paradise are made out of gold. It's enough Joy to see something like this, to hear about it, let alone live in such an environment. There were two names of trees from the trees of paradise that were mentioned in prophetic texts. The first one is Tuba, a tree called Tuba. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is narrated by Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu, reported by Imams Ahmad and Ibn Hibban and Sheikh al-Albani ruled it to be sound. He said, alayhi salatu was salam, Tuba is a tree in paradise. It takes a hundred years to pass it. The garments of the people of paradise will be taken out of its fruits. Remember we said the garments are made out of Pure silk. You imagine a fruit from a tree. You go and open it and, or you don't even have to go and open it. By the way, we said there is no effort exerted. But these garments of paradise grow 
as fruits in a tree, the trunk of which is made out of gold. Allah. What a joy, brothers and sisters. The other tree's name is Sidratul Muntaha. Anas ibn Malik narrates, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad, and Sheikh al Albani ruled it to be authentic. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was enabled to see whilst in the seventh heaven a tree by the name of Sidratul Muntaha. He said, the fruits of which are in the size of the vessels of Hajar. And these are vessels that can take in volume about 155 liters of fluid as the scholars, contemporary scholars, calculated it. He said its leaves are in the size of the ear of an elephant. This is the leaf. From its trunk, four rivers come out. Two hidden and two apparent. So he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, so I asked Jibreel, what are these rivers, two hidden and two apparent? He said, as for the two apparent, these are two rivers people can see in life. The Nile River, which is in Egypt, and the Euphrates, which is in Iraq. He said, as for the two hitting ones, these are two rivers that people will be able to see only once admitted into paradise. The fruits of paradise. Utbah ibn Abdullah May Allah be pleased with him. This is reported by Imam Tabarani and Shaykh Al-Albani ruled it to be authentic. He said a Bedouin came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him about the fruits of paradise and he asked him whether or not it will have grapes or amongst them will be grapes. He said Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, yes. So the Bedouin said, how large is it's great bunch. He said, it takes a craw, a full month of flying non-stop for it to pass it. Subhanallah. So the man said, what a huge bunch. Then a grape from that, meaning one piece, will suffice me and my family. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, it will suffice you and your family and your entire tribe. It will fill you, it will fill your family, and it will fill your entire tribe. Once you eat one grape in paradise. Then Allah continues to say, وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ And full-breasted female companion of equal age. These are the wives of men in paradise. These are going to be extremely beautiful and attractive ladies with different qualities. And they will be all at one young age. Description the same. Equal in all aspects. Because there will be no enmity, no jealousy in paradise. And that is why they were made of equal age and equal qualities and description. All of them. They are loving. They are caring. They are compassionate. They long to meet their husbands. And their husbands long to meet them. And this mentioned here is because it's one of the pleasures mankind enjoys. Males enjoy. But a question was always raised is that why was there a mention made of the females of paradise as a reward for the pious? male, and there is no mention of what type of reward females will get once they're admitted into paradise. It is not befitting to mention the description 
or such joy women will enjoy in paradise because of their bashfulness. But Allah Azza wa Jal promised them that they will get everything they desire and hope for. Just like men will. Allah says in chapter Fussilat, verse 31. And you will have therein whatever you request and wish and desire. So that goes for men and women. Anyone who's admitted into paradise, males and females, will get anything they wish and desire in paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal, as the scholar said, is capable of creating men for pious women who die single, for example. But what type of attainment in particular, in details, we don't have that for women. Going back to the female companions of pious men in paradise. Al-Bukhari reports, as narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if one of the ladies of paradise was to look upon the people of earth, she would illuminate what is between the heavens and the earth. All will be lit up. And she will fill what's between the heavens and earth with a beautiful fragrance and smell. And her headgear, her head cover is better than this life, this world, and all the pleasures that it contains. This is the description of one of the women of paradise. Allah Azza wa Jal describes another aspect of these ladies in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, verse number 36. Saying, فَجَعَلْنَا هُنَّ أَبْكَارًا and made them virgins. al Izz ibn Abdul Salam said, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said they are virgins and every time their husbands go back to have intercourse with them, they find them virgins again. Every time. And they are virgins who were never touched before. Their mates. Allah says in verse 74 of chapter Al-Rahman, لم يطمثهن انس قبلهم ولا جان untouched before them by man or jinn they are purified ladies they don't suffer the regular impurities a woman suffers on a monthly basis whether it is the monthly period or the postpartum bleeding that happens after delivering uh, in pregnancy and so on and so forth. They are purified to be perfect joy for their husbands and mates. Allah described them further in chapter Al-Waqi'ah verse 23 saying, كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ The likeness of pearls, well protected. Al Imam Al Sa'di, rahmatullah alayhi, said, "They are like white, pure, smooth, untouched pearls, well preserved, well protected, ready for their mates to enjoy. There is no defect in them. They are perfect in all aspects." in all descriptions with regards to their quality. Let's conclude this episode with a comparison, a small comparison between the women of dunya and the women of 
paradise. Scholars said, there is no comparison between a pious Muslim woman who enters paradise and the ladies of paradise, meaning Hur al Because the ladies of paradise, Hur al were created by Allah for paradise as a reward for men who deserved with the grace of Allah Azza wa to be admitted into paradise. So they were creation created purely and exclusively for paradise as a reward to others. Whilst a pious woman was admitted into paradise, entered paradise as a result of the effort she exerted as a result of her piety, as a result of her adherence to the commandments of Allah. So she is a queen in her territory. She is a queen commanding whilst the Hur al are slaves, subjects to others, instructing them and commanding them. Finally, Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen was asked about the comparison of women of dunya and akhirah and whether the pious women who are admitted into paradise will be better in all aspects, he said, yes, they will be better in all aspects, even the looks. So the looks we described and Allah describes in the Quran about al hurul the ladies of paradise, the pious Muslim woman who is admitted into paradise will even, will be even better. She will be even better in looks than al hurul أقول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين